If you look back at the last hundred years, you can really say that only two British prime ministers have left number 10 entirely voluntarily. Most of them have been booted out by the electorate. When the curtain falls, it's time to get off the stage, and that is what I propose to do. Then there's another section of them who are removed and replaced by somebody else because their own party has lost confidence in them. The party faithful couldn't have been more effusive when Margaret Thatcher celebrated 10 years as prime minister. But just 13 months later, the woman who'd won three elections for the Conservatives was deposed. Ladies and gentlemen, we're leaving Downing Street for the last time after 11 and a half wonderful years. Prime Minister's belief that they should remain there and nobody else can do the job as well as they can usually exceeds how long the voters and their colleagues are going to tolerate them. But when the Prime Minister spoke out for modernising services like the NHS, some in the audience had had enough. In the case of Tony Blair, they become so weakened as he was in 2006 that they're obliged to say they'll leave number 10. Today I announce my decision to stand down from the leadership of the Labour Party. The party will now select a new leader. On the 27th of June, I will tender my resignation from the office of Prime Minister to the Queen. When the leader's brand becomes tarnished, when, as is nearly inevitable, they get tainted by scandal, they make mistakes, disillusion starts to attract to them, then they pull the whole party down with them because they put so much weight on the leader's personality. In any democracy, you are the tenant, your prime minister, one morning, and the next morning you're not. Your furniture is being removed from the back car park of number 10. The electorate always have the right to throw you out.